January 12, 2016 has finally arrived, bringing with it an automated gate system sea change, particularly for installers. Why? Because when you uncreate your first UL325 tested and compliant operator, it will operate differently than those manufactured before January 12, 2016. This PowerPoint takes you through what you and your installers must know in order to make this transition easy and understandable. The most visible change installers will see is that UL now requires monitoring of all external entrapment protection sensors. Monitoring is a method to ensure that the external sensors, sometimes called safety devices, are installed and working properly. Since the year 2000, UL325 has required gate operator manufacturers to supply or have provisions for at least two independent entrapment protection means. For swing and slide gate operators, each means of entrapment protection must serve to protect in both directions of gate travel. At installation, both entrapment protection means must be installed. Operator manufacturers have customarily provided an inherent sensor, plus an input or multiple inputs for connection to external entrapment protection sensors. It is the installer's responsibility to evaluate the installation site for all entrapment hazards and to install all the proper entrapment protection devices to mitigate those risks. So why monitor external entrapment protection sensors? To improve gate system safety, thus reducing the risk to people in the vicinity of an automated gate. If an external entrapment protection device sensor is missing or fails, the gate will only move in the direction of the missing or inoperative sensor by using a push-button control requiring continuous pressure. Monitoring greatly reduces the chance that a missing or failed sensor would still allow a gate to automatically operate in a condition where system safety may be compromised. These four types of automatic gates now require monitored external entrapment protection sensors. For high security, this includes the slide driver, slide smart, swing riser, swing smart, hydra swing, and hydra lift. UL325 changes also affect barrier arms, but do not require monitored external entrapment protection sensors. We'll address barrier arm changes later in this program. Section 31.1.1 has been a key part of the UL325 standard since the year 2000. For all these years, UL325 has mandated the use of at least two independent means of entrapment protection, each means protecting against entrapment in both directions of gate travel. The gate operator inherent sensor fulfills the first device requirement. This is a picture of the UL325 Table 31.1. The sixth edition of the UL325 standard has reinforced this long-standing mandate for external entrapment protection sensors by requiring monitoring. While this Table 31.1 has been simplified for clarity, its requirements are fundamentally the same as they've been for many years. The most significant new change to this section is that a warn before operate audio alert is no longer a qualified entrapment protection sensor. See the exception for some residential swing gate operators. Residential, low power swing gate operators may be fully compliant without the use of photo wise or gate edges. Again, these are low power residential operators which use a, a qualified type A inherent sensor and a type C force limiting system as the second means. Otherwise, photo eyes and or edge sensors are required to fulfill the second means of entrapment protection. An important aspect of table 31.1 is the note section in the middle of the table. The note clearly states that a combination of one type B1 photo eye for one direction and one type B2 edge sensor for the other direction is the equivalent of one device. Thus, for slide gates, typically a minimum of two external entrapment protection sensors must be installed to protect both directions of gate travel unless one sensor can be configured to serve and protect against entrapment in both directions of gate travel. More on that later. Swing gates require one external entrapment protection sensor as a minimum. 
it is up to the installer to evaluate the gate and the site and decide whether one external sensor is sufficient and install the appropriate number of external sensors in areas where the risk of entrapment exists. If entrapment zones exist in both the open and closed directions of travel, installers required are required to protect against entrapment in both directions of gate travel. Again, a single sensor seldom meets the UL325 standard for entrapment protection in both directions of gate travel. Almost all slide gate installations will require a minimum of two external entrapment sensors. The external entrapment protection sensors would typically be two photo eyes, two edge sensors, or a combination of one or more of both sensor types. Vertical lift and vertical pivot gates seldom require entrapment protection during the open gate cycle and thus may require only one external entrapment protection sensor in the closed direction. That's up to the installer to determine. Monitoring requires that if an external entrapment protection sensor is not connected to the gate operator or malfunctions, then the gate can only move in that direction of the missing or failed sensor by using a continuous pre pressure actuation control or manual operation. This is intended to require that the person operating the gate assures its safe operation and also provides an alert that something is wrong with the gate system that needs to be addressed. Monitoring is done at least once for every open and closed cycle. It is important to understand that UL325 only sets the minimum standard. Is ensuring that your installs meet the UL325 2016 minimum requirement enough? Maybe, maybe not. It's up to the installer to audit the specific safety concerns of every one of their installations. That means that some installations may require more than the UL325 minimums to mitigate all safety issues posed by the type and construction of gate used and the nature of the risks at any site. The most common entrapment zone that installers tend to consider first is the leading end of a slide or swing gate. There are, however, other potential entrapment areas, some of which may pose even more risk than the leading end of the gate. We will illustrate these later in the presentation. Installers may use one external entrapment sensor on a slide gate pr to protect against entrapment in both directions of travel under very specific conditions. Use of one photo eye to span the entire length of gate travel from the leading end in the fully closed position to beyond the trailing end in the fully open position. For swing gates, one external entrapment protection sensor will often suffice if the installer decides that entrapment zones exist in both the open and closed directions of travel, additional entrapment protection sensors may be required. One potential solution may be the use of a wraparound style edge sensor installed on the leading and or bottom edge of a swing gate. Note that high security provides inputs specifically engineered to accept a single sensor that serves to protect in both directions, but that is not necessarily the case for other manufacturers control boards. See each manufacturer's operator instruction manual. Again, it's up to the installer to ensure that they protect against all potential areas of entrapment. Any fixed object greater than two and a quarter inches but less than 16 inches from a moving part of the gate poses an entrapment hazard. Pay special attention to gate support posts, walls, fence line, potential pinch points, and other fixed objects that could entrap a person while the gate is moving in either direction. All external entrapment protection sensors, eyes and edges, must be approved by a recognized testing laboratory, usually UL or ETL, and additionally tested to prove they work correctly with each operator. To make it easy for installers, High Security provides a table clearly showing the approved and tested sensors that are fully compatible with High Security gate operators. This approved sensor list is available as 1. A sticker on the outside of the shipping box for gate operators manufactured in 2016. 2. A document placed in the electrical enclosure of the operator. 3. In operator installation reference manuals. And 4 on the High Security website at www.highsecurity.com forward slash gate safety. As new sensors become available, High Security will periodically 
have them tested with our operators and update the list of approved sensors. Only sensors tested with the specific manufacturer's gate operator can be installed with that gate operator. I want to make this very clear. Each gate operator manufacturer's approved sensors are only approved for their operators unless that same sensor was also tested and approved by another gate operator manufacturer. To put it another way, a Miller Edge sensor may be approved by two or more manufacturers. Approval by any one manufacturer does not constitute approval for any other manufacturer. Installers will soon find out that almost every gate operator manufacturer chose a different compliance pathway. Without passing judgment on others' compliance choices, High Security followed UL325 6th edition to a T, ensuring an easy installer path to full UL compliance when installing high security operators. Because high security operators are all based on flexible and highly configurable software, our path proved singularly simple, reliable, and secure for installers, distributors, and end users alike. There are three methods that gate operator manufacturers chose to meet UL325 6th edition external sensor monitoring requirements. Pulsed, 2 or 4 wire, 10K resistive, or normally closed NC. High security implemented the third method, normally closed connections, with a simple software update which minimized the impact on installers and reduced the risk of a complicated, unsuccessful install. Hence, the Count Me NC Safe logo you see in this PowerPoint and in every publication related to this UL325 change. High security hardware didn't change, and the updated software not only supports the new UL325 2016 standard, but it is also 100% backwards compatible for use with all pre-2016 operators. That means it's easy to upload software on already installed pre-2016 operators should you need to replace a smart touch or smart DC board or update the software. As has always been the case, High Security's latest software updates are easy to download from HighSecurity.com, free of charge, and we didn't raise our operator chart prices as a result of this UL change. You don't have to spend additional hard-earned profit for this mandatory UL325 2016 functionality with High Security operators. Two control boards are employed in High Security's entire line of High Security, Hydraulic, and Electromechanical gate operators for crash, industrial, commercial, and parking applications. That's only two control boards for five operator product lines and more than 50 operator models. Hydraulically powered operators use the Smart Touch controller, and 24 volt DC electromechanical operators use the Smart DC controller. Each of these controllers runs its own software. The new three, UL325 2016 Smart Touch Hydraulic software version is version H4.50 or higher. And the new UL325 2016 for Smart DC Electromechanical software version is version H5.50 or higher. Software updates are accessible on High Security's website. An installer can easily update any high security gate operator in the field. Simply download new software and use a laptop and our start program for PCs to upload it to your operator. The operator's date of manufacture can be found on the serial number label both on the outside cover and inside the chassis of the operator. So what's changed in our software? We differentiate between pre-2016 operator and an operator manufactured after January 1, 2016 by adding a new software menu item, Build Year, or BY. There are two settings for BY. BY1 identifies an operator manufactured pre-2016, and BY2 operators manufactured after January 1, 2016. All operators manufactured after January 1, 2016 are factory set to BY2. When you update a pre-2016 operator to new software, 
the BY menu item is displayed. If BY is set to 1, the operator will continue to operate but with the latest features and function, but without requiring that your installation meet the new UL325 2016 standard. However, if you set BY to 2, then you have just updated the operator to compliance with a new UL325 2016 standard. Remember, you must now install the new approved monitored entrapment protection sensors. Keep in mind the new UL325 2016 standard only applies to operators manufactured after January 12, 2016, and the new standard is not retroactive for operators manufactured before that date. With pre-2016 high security operators, you are provided the choice of either maintaining the pre-2016 operator functionality, or you can update it to the higher safety standard of UL325 2016. High Security always recommends updating to the latest safety standards and has made it very easy to do so. For new operators, build year 2 operators, High Security added three additional menu items, Sensor 1 S1, Sensor 2 S2, and Sensor 3 S3. These correspond to three renamed terminals on the Smart Touch and Smart DC boards. The former Edge Sensor input is now named Sensor 1. This also renames the edge sensor input located by the radio options section on the bottom of the board. The former photo eye open input is renamed to sensor 2 and the photo eye close input is now sensor 3. You can program each of these three sensor inputs for any sensor type and choose from three sensor functions. All three sensors are factory set to zero, which means the input is disabled. Initial standard Operator Power-Up leads you through configuring user class and gate handing. Then you are prompted to set three sensors, S1, S2, and S3, to a non-zero value. If all three sensors are set to 1, not used, then the gate will still open and close, but only with a continuous pressure button actuation. An operator installed with less external entrapment protection sensors than the UL325 minimum will require a constant hold to open or a constant hold to close for both directions. The required sensors must be attached and programmed for the gate operator to function automatically and be compliant with UL325 6th edition. The setting options for S1, S2, and S3 are 0, disabled, 1, not used, 2, I close, 3, edge close, 4, I open, 5, edge open, 6, edge both, swing gates only, and seven, eye both, solo slide gates only, not dual gates. The type of operator and sensor settings chosen define the minimum number of sensors required to permit normal gate operator functionality, making it easy for installers to install a UL325 6th edition compliant gate system. This is the Smart Touch controller with renamed sensor one, two, and three inputs as well as sensor com for power. Sensor power is only active during gate movement, not active when the gate is not moving, which conserves peripheral power draw. This is important for DC operators and critically important for solar operators. Note, at the bottom of the board, there is an edge sensor terminal in the radio options area. Use this input as a sensor one input or the sensor one screw terminal, but not both. Remember, there is an edge sensor spade connector at the bottom of both the Smart Touch and Smart DC boards. This connector is equivalent to the Sensor 1 screw terminal input. Connect a sensor to one of these inputs, but not both. A total of three entrapment protection sensors can be connected to the board. If you need more than three sensor inputs, use a Miller Edge device called the Solution, which adds six sensor inputs. The solution adapter connects to one or two of the sensor inputs, depending upon how it is to be used. Follow these easy steps to update the software on your pre-2016 high security gate operator. One, download high security's start software into your PC laptop. Then after start is fully installed, download the operator software. Two, using your PC laptop with start and the new operator software loaded, 
and using the proper connector cable, follow the simple instructions provided by START to update your gate operator. And three, set the menu BY equals one and voila, you're done. Your high security gate operator will now operate as it did before, but with the latest software. Follow these four easy steps to update your pre-2016 high security gate operator software to conform to UL325 6th edition. One, download high security start software into your PC laptop, then download the operator software after you have start fully installed. Two, Using your PC laptop with Start and the new operator software loaded, and with the proper connector cable, follow the simple instructions provided by Start and update your gate operator. 3. Set the menu BY equals 2. And 4. Add the necessary external and trap and protection sensors and configure S1, S2, and S3 inputs. Your operator is now compliant with the UL325 2016 6th edition. Let's summarize the key changes. High security monitors external sensors via normally closed NC outputs. Configure your external entrapment protection sensors during the operator setup using S1, S2, and S3 inputs. Sensors 1, S1, Sensor 2, S2, Sensor 3, S3 inputs, and Sensor Power, Sensor Com are renamed inputs on high security's control boards. To assure proper function and allow monitoring, install only approved external entrapment protection sensors covering both open and closed directions of gate travel. It's that easy. Now let's look at common entrapment zones, especially entrapment zones in the open direction of travel. Number one pictured here is a commonly missed entrapment zone, also called a draw-in zone. You can see that the gate travels next to two stationary objects. Should a child ride the gate while opening, or anyone reach through a gate component, they may be drawn into one of these entrapment zones, either on the secure or public side of the gate. Number one illustrates the use of edge sensors to protect against entrapment along fixed posts, walls, or fence lines. Number two illustrates the use of edge sensors to protect against entrapment at the leading end of the gate. And number three illustrates the use of edge sensors to protect against entrapment at the trailing end of the gate. This similar slide gate illustrates the use of two photo eye sensors, one protecting against entrapment in the open gate cycle, the other protecting in the closed gate cycle. You can also see the edge sensor on the public side of the gate, protecting against someone being drawn in between the fixed wall and the moving gate. UL325 6th edition requires that you install a minimum of one external entrapment protection sensor on a swing gate. It is up to the installer to decide whether one external session sensor is sufficient. If entrapment zones exist in both the open and closed directions of travel, installers are required to protect against entrapment in both directions of gate travel. This swing gate protects the gate end at the outside of the arc in both directions of travel using a wraparound edge sensor that can protect against entrapment during the gate open cycle and also the gate closing cycle. The same wraparound edge sensor on the bottom rail of the gate serves to protect against entrapment between the bottom of the gate and a road or a curb, again both directions of travel. Note that when the gate is fully open, it is within a few inches of a stationary wall. This is an entrapment zone that needs to be protected. In this case, it uses a photo eye, which would stop gate movement when a person breaks the photo eye beam. If a swing gate travels within 16 inches of a fixed object, you must protect against entrapment. These are three ways that this installer protected against entrapment. There are other ways, including altering gate geometry. Find the most creative, cost-effective, and aesthetic ways to protect people in proximity to your gate installations. Barrier arm operators are usually exempted from the need to protect against entrapment. If an edge sensor or photo eye is added where there is no risk of entrapment, it does not need to be monitored because its purpose is object detection.
If your moving arm comes within 16 inches of a fixed object, you must use a photo eye or an edge sensor to protect this zone. This is a change from the previous UL standard. It reduces the distance between the arm and a fixed object from the previous 2 feet to 16 inches. What constitutes a fixed object? Common fixed objects include bollards, photo eye mounting posts, arm catch posts, walls close to either end of arm travel, and more. Congratulations! You've done a pretty thorough training on the new UL325 6th edition changes and what they mean for your gate installations. Take this course as often as you wish and have your staff review it to ensure you know what it takes to complete a job and you cover your safety bases. Additionally, High Security has made a bunch of UL325 safety training guides available and very accessible. Every gate operator manual explains how to comply with UL325 and ASTM F2200. We've created a supplement to our manuals which makes clear the new UL325 standard and how it affects you. Our UL325 2016 FAQ is very helpful and answers the most often asked questions about compliance with the new UL325 standard. All of these are available for download at www.highsecurity.com forward slash gate safety. And finally, every high security training includes a usually hour long safety component. Your regional sales manager will also schedule trainings for your staff. On a somber note, an eight year old North Las Vegas boy died after becoming stuck in an automatic gate at the village at Craig Ranch Community on Tuesday night, March 3, 2015. The following is courtesy of the North Las Vegas Police Department. An eight-year-old North Las Vegas boy died after his head was crushed when he was playing in the gate to the gated community where he lived. The incident happened Tuesday evening near Craig Road and Fifth Street, just north of Canyon Springs High School. Police say as the boy was climbing through a space in the gate, while another child on a bicycle rode close to the automatic gate and activated it, crushing the boy's head. He was rushed to a hospital, but did not survive. Investigators at the scene say it appeared to be a tragic accident. People who live in the area say the boy had been playing in the gate in the past, and that he was small enough to be able to climb through a horizontal space in the gate that's made mostly of vertical metal bars. A photograph of the gate on the North Las Vegas Police Office of Public Information Facebook page shows the sign that warns of its dangers. All those who manufacture, distribute, design, install, and use automated vehicular gates bear high responsibility to meet or exceed the UL325s and ASTM F2200 minimum safety standards. Tragic accidents like this can be prevented by rigorous application of the most current entrapment protection standards. Thank you for taking the time to watch this high security UL325 gate safety training. Your investment in training and application of UL and ASTM automated safety standards protects children and adults from potential serious injury or death in the use and proximity to automated vehicular gate systems.